All right, hello everyone, this is Mr. Kirsch. I wanted to give you some help for the final exam review. I've selected 10 problems here um, that you'll want to make sure you know how to do for the final exam. There are other problems to do that you should know, but this will give you a good start. All right, so here we go. Number one, solve the following equation. Well, this two up here means it is quadratic, meaning there's two solutions. So at the end of the day, we're going to have to find both of those solutions. Well, easiest way to do this is to set it equal to zero. So I'm going to move this over here and this over here, and it's going to be x squared minus 5x squared minus 14 is equal to zero. Now at this point, um, I could use the quadratic formula, and you'll see that later, and that's where you figure out the a, b, and c value. But this one's going to work out real nice if I factor it. And it's going to be x and x, and how about minus 7 plus 2? If you were to FOIL this, right, if you were to FOIL all of these parts, you would be right back to where you started. So this is the factored version. And from the factored version, um, now we have two separate equations to solve. And x is equal to 7, so that's one solution. And x plus 2 is 0, so x is negative 2, and that's the other solution. So these are the two solutions that make this work. And, and again, you're going to want to go back and plug these in to make sure they work. They're not extraneous, but in this case, they both work. All right, number two, what are the x and y intercepts? Well, I always like to set up my chart with the x and the y, and this is what my x-intercept looks like, and this is what my y-intercept looks like. And what is y when x is 0, and what is x when y is 0? And this one's easiest to find right here. I'll just plug in 0, and that'd be 0, and that'd be 2 squared would be 4, 4 minus 4 would be 0. So right there we have it, that is an x-intercept. Alright, this one's a little bit trickier. I have to plug in 0 for y. So if I plug in 0 for y now, now I have a situation where the x is being squared. So again, I have two intercepts for this. Alright, let's solve this one a little different. Let's plug this, swing this over here, and I have 4 is equal to x plus 2. Take the square root. Well, that's plus or minus 2. Subtract the 2 over there. Plus or minus 2 minus 2 is x, and there's my solutions. Positive 2 minus 2 is 0, and negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So these are my y-intercepts. And this point right here happens to be both. It's both an x-intercept and a y-intercept because it's at the origin. All right, uh, number three, find the discriminant. Well, that is from the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus um, the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the discriminant is just this part. So let's put this into standard form. Let's identify the a and the b and the c and now let's just do b squared minus 4a just this part right here b squared would be 4 whoops 4 minus another 4 then an a then a c um, do all that work and we get 88 from this and so there's the discriminant. The discriminant is 88. And what does that mean for solutions? Well, I'm taking the square root of 88. So if I take the square root of 88, I'm going to have two numbers. And they're both going to be irrational. Two irrational solutions because the square root of 88 has two solutions. All right, identify the roots. Well, this is simply the same thing here where you, you figure out, well, what makes this 0? Well, that's a 0. What makes this 0? 5. And what makes this 0? Well, that would be 1 half. So there's my root. It's this exact same problem. However, they already factored it for you. Uh, factor the trinomial. Well, this is one of the hardest formulas. But I'm going to rewrite this as simply 2x cubed minus 3 cubed. And it's the difference of 2 cubes. This thing cubed minus this thing cubed. And once you have that, Make sure you go back and study this. I'm going to write it. The difference of cubes. Go back and memorize that formula because what you'll find is it's very simple. It's just this. And then we have 4x squared plus 6x plus 3. And if you don't know where this comes from, 
that's something you want to go back and study because that's just a formula. That's just a rule. You can go straight from here to here if you knew the rule. And, and the basics are you keep these the same, 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. And then you square this one, so 2x squared. And whoops, I forgot to square this one down here. And you square this one, 3 squared is 9. Then you multiply them together in the middle. So that's how I remember it. Um, but it's one of those things you want to memorize. You don't want to have to work this out on the day of the test. All right, five more problems for you. Um, number six here. Is this one a function? Well, vertical line test. One value, one value, one value. Whoops, three values. So this x value is leading to three different outputs. This input has three different outputs. So the answer is no, it's not a function. Uh, make a quick sketch of this function. Well, when I do this quick sketch, uh, the first thing I want to do is a vertex. Well, I know it's a parabola. And the vertex is 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You should be able to pick out that part of the, the um, quadratic function. And this is a line of symmetry. So I have a um, parabola here. And I know it's going down because of this. So it's going down. But I can get a little bit, little bit better here. What if I were to plug in 0 here? What if I do that intercept? What if I make my table and I do this intercept and I say, what if x is 0 at this point? Well, if I plug a 0 in here, I have 0 minus 3 is negative 3 squared is 9, times 3 is negative 27, plus 5 is negative 22. So I have that intercept. Well, well that's going to be way down here at negative 22. So it's going to drop down way like that. It's a very small, very skinny, tall parabola with that function or that vertex right there. All right, um, solve the radical equation. Well, let's swing this over here and I have root x minus 2 is 10. Square both sides. That would cancel that out. And this would be 100 and x equals 102. Now what you always want to do with these, whenever you see square roots, always go back and plug it back in here. Make sure it works. 102 minus 2 would be 100. The square root of 100 would be 10. 10 plus 1 would be 11. It checks. So um, I, I know a lot of times we like to solve them and stop. But if you see square roots, um, always go back and check them. Because every once in a while you'll get an answer that does not work. Uh, given the function, find f of 2. Well, that simply means we plug in 2. So f of negative 2 would be negative 2 squared. Negative 2 there would be negative 7. Negative 2 there would be 5. 4 times negative 7 times negative 5. Whoops, that's a positive 5 at the end there. And if you do that correctly, I believe you have 140. So this, this looks like a confusing problem, but it just means plug that number in there. Um, solve the system of equations. Well, solve the system equation means tell me what all the variables are. What is the x variable? What is the y variable? If you have two of them that are equal, just set the resulting sides equal to each other. They're both equal to y, so they're both equal to each other. This goes over here and makes 5x. This goes over here and makes negative 10. x is negative 2. Now, a lot of people stop right there. You only get half credit because now you need to take this negative 2 and figure out what y is. Well, if I put a negative 2 there, I have 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. Plus a negative 2 there, that'd be 6 minus 9. Hey, that's negative 3, 2, and that's why it's a solution. All right, well, these are the basics of the final. Again, there's definitely a lot more on the final, but this is just one way to help you get started in the right track. So I hope this helps as you prepare for the final, and good luck.